guys so um, today we are going to learn about analysis of an x-ray powder photograph so the main aim of the experiment is to determine space lattice the edge length of the unit cell the density of the given material using the given x-ray photographs so basically we just need two things that is we need this that is the photograph of the x-ray and we also need a scale to measure the length so what is the principle of this experiment? So the principle of this experiment is very simple. X-ray powder method uh, is used to find the random orientations of the planes. Okay. So using this random orientations, we can uh, suggest that there will be a position to reflect the radiation from an important set of planes. So this is the main principle of this. Using the Bragg's condition, we can find the interplanar distance where like when the cone forms concentric original beams of semi-vertical angles, that is two theta will be able to find all these given values. Okay. So moving on to the formula, formulas are very simple. So that is first is glancing angle, which is nothing but S by 4R in radians. And when S is the arc length in the centimeter, as I mentioned over here, as you can see, it forms a cone where this is the arc length. And R is the radius of the camera through which the X-ray photograph has been taken, like it has been captured. Now for the lattice spacing, that is H scale plane, as we all know, we need the interplanar distance, that is D is equal to N lambda by 2 sine theta. And at last, we can find the edge of the unit cell, that is nothing but A is equal to D into root of H square plus N square, K square plus L square. And then we can find the density, so on and so forth, using this formula, that is, rho is n into m by n by v, kg per meter. So now moving on to the experiment part, it's really simple. You have to make a table like this. It requires a lot of tables, so there's another table here, but there's another table here. As you can see here, in this, we have a center middle line passing through the centers of the small circles here. And we have five corresponding arcs to that, each small circle. As we can see, this is a arc 1, arc 2, arc 3, arc 4 and arc 5. And same as we did from here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, now we have to take the scale readings as seen here. So, scale readings in centimeter I need. That is, I need it in left arc and the right arc to find the diameter. How to take it? Please. Place the scale. Yeah. Exactly in the middle, that is, uh, it should pass through the center of the small circle and take this line as the reference line, this thin black line as the reference line, where this will be kept like this along passing through the center. So, this is the initial conditions. Now, now, to take measurements, this, as I mentioned, this is the left-hand side. So, from the center, this is the left-hand side uh, readings, that is left arcs, and these are the right arcs. So, now, to measure the distance, from the reference line to the first arc, that is, this is the fifth arc, basically, it's 0.2 centimeter, as we have written it here, you can see, is the fifth arc. So, you have to go from fifth, fourth, third, two, one, that is, it's fifth, fourth, third, two, one. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you go in this way. So, as we go, it's from down to here and then come again. So, it's 0 0.2 centimeter as we can see from the scale. So, I've written it as 0 0.2 over here. Now, the next length as we take, it is 0 0.4. So, we can take it as 0 0.4 and so on and so forth until this. After this, you're going to take the exact distance from the reference point itself. Please do not change the scale. It's the same. So, it's going to be from here to here. That as we can see, it is 6.3 for the first arc and 6.6 .6 for the second arc. And for the third arc, it's 7.6, 8.3 and 8.5. So, if you use any uh, X-ray photograph, it, this values remain a constant or a fairly constant values. Only simple calculations matters here. So, we'll find the diameter. Diameter is nothing but R2 minus R1, right minus left. You just write it in units. And please note down the unit is in centimeter. I've not converted it yet. Okay, it's in centimeter. Because when we take the glancing angle, glancing angle is nothing but theta is S by 4R, where S is the diameter of the ring. And as we can see, R is given the radius of the camera as 2.865 centimeters. So, when you start dividing it by this, that is S by 4R, as I've calculated 4R here, okay. and theta 1 is nothing but S, that is 3.9, divided by 11.46 centimeter, centimeter goes away, so it's 
okay here and we get the radians that is 0 0.3403 so correspondingly do it for all the all the s values the 4r remains constant here. so you will get these many values five readings five set of readings and then please convert theta to degree here in this case so basically to convert theta to degree it's very easy it's 180 by pi into the radians how much ever you have got okay simple calculation as you can see it's pi Pi radians is 180 degrees. So, radians we have measured in x degrees. So, x is nothing but 180 by pi into radians. Using that formula, we'll get all this. That is 180 by pi into 0 0.3403 gives me 19.49 degrees. So, all this. Now, take the sign of these values. Sign of the degree values. So, you'll be getting these many values. Square them, you'll be getting all these values. So, the successive difference is between 2 and 1. So, sine square theta successive difference you have to take that is 2 minus 1, you will write it in 1. 3 minus 2, you will write it in 2. 4 minus 3, you will write it in 3. 5 minus 4, you will write it in 4. So, you will get 4 values for successive difference. The least value of all these 4 gives the common factor value. Okay. The common factor value is needed because the least one of this will be the common factor of all the successive difference. Now, we will be finding the H square, H square plus K square plus L square values. That is nothing but sine square theta by the common factor, which we have already found out to be 0 0.0355. So, you divide each value by this many values, you will be getting these many corresponding values. That is H square plus K square plus L square. Now, to find HKL, it's very simple. You round this off to the nearest whole number. That is, in this case, it's 3. And we know that H square plus K square plus L square is 3. So, HKL will be 1, 1, 1 because 1 plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square is 3. So, we can easily find it out. So, similarly, you round off this to the next whole number and find the plane. Similar way, you will be finding all the Miller's indices. Okay. So, this part is done. Moving on to the next part, it's very simple. You just find the D values that is interplanar distance. You just find using N lambda by 2 sine theta. That is the formula. We know already n is given here, as we can see here, n is nothing but the order of diffraction 1 and the lambda is nothing but wavelength of the x-ray, which is 1.5418 Armstrong units. So, we need not convert this here because we do need the interplanar distance in Armstrong unit itself. So, you, as you can see, I have done it here. You can see it's 1 into 1 1.5418. That's 1 into lambda divided by 2 into sine theta. The corresponding sine theta value, that is point. 3, 3. Corresponding sine theta value. If you do that, you are going to get 2.3360 Armstrong units, which is nothing but the interplanar distance. Now, you do it for all the other 5 sine theta values. So, you get 5 different set of values for D. Now, you find the edge length. Edge length is very simple. You just do it D, that is whatever the interplanar distance you have got. You multiply it by root of this number, which you have got h square plus k square plus n square. That is this 3.0676. As I've shown you, you can see a is nothing but d into root of h square plus k square plus n square, and you can easily find it out. It will be around this values. Now, so as I've tabulated this, now we can find the average value. The average value will be nothing but add all this divided by 5. Then cube this, you'll be getting the volume. And to find the density, you uh, there is a formula which you use that is n into m by n by v, which is simple. n is nothing but the number of atoms in an FCC lattice because as we are using silver here, it will obey FCC lattice. So, it is 4 number of atoms per unit. Then m is nothing but the atomic mass of silver that is 107.88 divided by the Avogadro's number that is 6.023 into 10 to the power 26 and the found out volume in terms of meter cube not in terms of Armstrong units so as i've converted it you can see it's 10 to the power minus 30 so now calculating this value we'll get the density of silver that is to be around 1.4 1.046 into 10 to the power 4 kg per meter cube so this simple is the experiment it's very simple you just have to take the measurements properly